What's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P. Joe Pizapia, back with another waiver wire video for Major League Baseball. That's right. And I've got guys for you this week. Oh, do I have players to add? I got a rookie for you. I got a starting pitcher coming back to take a rotation spot. And not one, but two guys who are less than 20% rostered for all you lunatics playing in those very deep leagues. So don't worry. Uncle Joey's going to help you out adding the right players to help you win a fantasy championship. And speaking of a fantasy championship, I've got this for you too. You like free stuff? Of course you do. We're giving away this incredible Trophy Smack championship belt, and it can be yours. All you have to do is subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB. Yeah. And comment below on any video, this one, or any video you like. Comment. Feel free to do that. And don't forget to ring that bell for notifications till it goes ding, so you know if you're the big winner and when a piece of content drops here on our incredible Major League Baseball channel. So, without further ado, let's get to the names that I want to add in Fantasy Baseball for Week 7. Let's kick things off with Kyle Manzardo of the Cleveland Guardians, first baseman, rostered in just under 60% of leagues. Manzardo got the call for the Cleveland Guardians this week, and although it was not the best debut playing the entire doubleheader going 0 for 7 with 5 strikeouts, patience, patience, patience. At AAA, Kyle Manzardo was slashing 303, 375, 642 with 9 dingers, 20 ribbies, and 25 runs scored over 128 plate appearances for Columbus. Manzardo has a power profile, and he will get some time there at first base and DH. Josh Naylor is not going to miss any time, so don't panic, everybody. But Kyle Manzardo got the call, and the Cleveland Guardians are a real contender this year, so pick up Manzardo wherever you can. Be patient. Again, there's that P word, patience, when it comes to any of these prospects, but Manzardo has nothing left to prove at AAA, so Cleveland's going to be giving him a long leash. You should, too, but regardless... Bring him up to your team from the waiver wire this week, just like the Cleveland Guardians did, just in case he starts to blossom quicker than we realize at the major league level. Next thing you know, you could have a big time power bat on your hands. Next on our list this week is Tyler McGill, starting pitcher for the New York Mets, rostered in just 12% of leagues. Now, why should we be proactive of adding Tyler McGill? Well, the reason is he's going to get back into this Mets rotation, and it could even be a six-man rotation going forward, but there's no reason why Tyler McGill is not going to go back where he started out the season theoretically before his injury. The interesting part about this, too, is he's pitched very well in his rehab starts. The first one, he just walked one guy with 62 pitches and four frames. Then... At AAA, his last start, four and two-thirds innings, striking out 10 batters, one walk. Now, I'm not saying this guy's going to be dominant, but if you're looking for pitching help, McGill is going to go back and get a spot in that rotation. It could be at the expense of a Jose Buto. We shall see, but either him or Christian Scott could get bounced from this rotation. Regardless, McGill is going to get a spot back in it, and this rotation is going to get even more crowded when Kodai Senga eventually returns too. In the meantime, McGill is a guy that can help you as he is slated to make his return possibly as early as next week. And so far, so good when it's come to the rehab start. So in deeper leagues, if you need some pitching help, Tyler McGill might be a guy you can plug and play in the month of May. Hey, do you like cheap power? Me too. Brent Rooker, outfielder for the Oakland A's, rostered in about 55% of leagues. Now, Brent Rooker last year was a guy that showed up on this very video more than once. Why? Because he's got cheap power, and we like cheap power. It's a good thing. So far in 25 games this year, he has 8 homers and 21 RBI. Yes, he's always going to strike out. Yes, he's always going to hit for somewhere in the 240 to 250 batting average range. But regardless, if you're looking to add a little bit of pop to your lineup, Brent Rooker is a guy that's probably floating around the waiver wire. Last year was a very solid season for Brent Rooker, and it kind of came out of nowhere. I'm not saying he can sustain that, but... 30 home runs is nothing to sneeze at. I know the RBI total last year was underwhelming at 69, but then again, the A's have been underwhelming for quite some time. This year's been a little bit different of a story. He's already got 21 RBI, let's not forget that, in 25 games. So the pacing is much better. Brent Rooker's an everyday player. Get him on your lineups if you're looking for a bat to help you out, especially if you just lost somebody to the IL. Rooker can give you a little bit of power in the meantime, and he might be valuable in deeper leagues as well. So you lost Trey Turner this week for the next, oh, I don't know, month and a half. It might not be a long-term solution, but in the meantime, Josh H. Smith of the Texas Rangers could be a guy to plug and play. He qualifies all over the infield, and he's rostered 
in under 60% of leagues currently. If you look up, he's done a really good job filling in for Josh Young so far. And depending on your league rules, again, the flexibility between infield and outfield is huge for Smith. So far in 36 games, he has two homers, 16 ribbies, 14 walks and 23 strikeouts. He's hitting 302 with 19 runs scored. We know Texas is a good lineup. We know Smith is getting at bats. So as long as that keeps up, that's all going to work. Now, it's not going to take us all the way through the Trey Turner injury, but right now it's slim pickings in the middle infield when you're looking for guys to fill in for Trey Turner. So Josh H. Smith could be that guy at least for the next month until Josh Young returns and probably takes his spot back over at third base on a full-time basis. But regardless, we're looking week to week here at the very least, trying to piece things together. Smith could be a good stopgap while we're trying to figure out a more long-term solution for problems at shortstop. You can never have enough pitching, so let's add Taj Bradley to our list this week. He is rostered in about 50% of leagues, currently starting pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, Taj Bradley last year... Well, it was kind of a hot mess. Why? Because he got thrust into a position he wasn't ready for in the developmental chain when injuries befell the Tampa Bay Rays rotation. But despite those struggles last year, Taj Bradley came into spring looking very sharp. Unfortunately, an injury then made its way with a pectoral and sent him out of the rotation for the time being. However, he's been working his way back in his most recent start as well. Bradley was sharp, striking out eight guys in six innings of one-run baseball at AAA. He is taking the ball again on Friday for the Rays with Ryan Pepio going on the IL, and he figures to stay in this rotation for the remainder of the season as long as he stays healthy. There might be some bumps along the road, but Taj Bradley was a very talented pitcher in the minor leagues, a very highly regarded prospect, so he is absolutely worth taking a shot on because, like I said before, you can never have enough starting pitching. Another guy from the bottom of the barrel. Let's close things out here with Tommy Pham of the Chicago White Sox, rostered in under 20% of leagues currently. He's playing outfield for the White Sox in pretty much every single day. So what does that mean? Well, over his first 10 games since signing with the White Sox, 39 at-bats, he's got two homers, five RBI, and he's hitting a nice 282. Tommy Pham had a really good season last year and really didn't get enough credit for it. He's always been a guy that gave you some power and some speed, and last year, in 129 games for Arizona, he gave you 16 homers and 22 steals and hit 256. I'll take that on my roster, especially in deeper leagues. The good news for Tommy Pham, too, is if he keeps playing well, it's only a matter of time before some other contender has an injury and wants to pick up some extra outfield depth, and boom, next thing you know, Tommy Pham is going to be on a different roster. So I don't think he's long for the Chicago White Sox, but he will have value at some point in time in July if he keeps anything up remotely close to the productivity that he had last year or in the decent start this year. So Tommy Pham, again, not rostered in a lot of leagues. If you're looking for some outfield help or you want to bench somebody while they get hot, hopefully in a few weeks, and you need somebody in the middle of that period of time, well, Tommy Pham might just be your guy. Again, power, speed, decent batting average. Yes, please. There you have it, everybody. Those are the names, but I want to hear from you. Drop your names below in this video and you tell me who the guys you want to add in Major League Baseball for Week 7 are. And who knows, I'll probably reply to it and tell you, that's a great idea. I wish I thought of that person. Or you could say, Joe, how could you say to add this guy? That's a terrible idea, but that would hurt my feelings. And then maybe I don't want to give you the trophy belt. Okay, I still want to give you the trophy belt. So comment below, subscribe to the channel, have some fun playing baseball. And again, join us on Fantasy Pros MLB for leading off every single day, Monday through Friday, live right here on the channel. That'll do it for me, Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.